Hello there, Ray here, and today we just got 1.18.1 full release. This is the second major version for 1.18, with 1.18.0 kind of having a deadline, so some major issues weren't fixed in it. So in this video, we'll be talking about lag, as well as these changes, and also some 1.19 sneak peeks. So leave a like and let's get started. Before we look at the changes, I want to address something that is important. That has to do with this poll that I put out on my YouTube community page. And for those who that have my bell notification turned on, you'll get notified of when I put out messages on my community page, which I do several times a week. In this poll, I ask, have you played 1.18 Minecraft full release yet? And it was about 50% of people did and about 50% didn't. What was really fascinating was the comments with that, where people were explaining why they weren't playing 1 to 18 yet. Some reasons where they didn't have time yet because of like school or work. But there was a lot of comments saying that 1 to 18 was just too laggy. And people were having troubles with their computers crashing or their graphics card just not able to keep up with it. So I want to quickly go over some ways that you guys can run 1 to 18 even on low end computers. That actually starts at your launcher when you want to play like 1 to 18 or any version for a while make sure you make a new installation then choose what version you want so i'm going to choose 1 to 18 give it whatever name you want to i'm just going to call it 18. I go down here where it says more options and then right where it says the gvm make sure to give minecraft enough ram because they'll do a lot of exploring so if you have four gigabytes of ram to dedicate to minecraft go ahead and do that otherwise you can leave it on two but remember as you're exploring you're using it up so if you do leave it at two gigabytes remember to restart your minecraft every so often and i'll show you that in game right here where it says java executable this is where you can decide which java for it to use but minecraft will automatically put in the most recent one Resolution is how big you want your screen to automatically set. If you guys are wondering how you can get the Minecraft jar file for your servers, that's what this little button here is for. Then you go ahead and hit create. Then the newest version will be way at the bottom. And as soon as you hit play, it'll put it to the top because it puts these in the order that you use them. So now it's up here. Now I play in adjusted full screen for higher quality for you guys that are watching my videos. If you come here into the settings and go into your video settings, if you set the sim distance really low, it's going to be a really small area around the player that entity and block updates work will occur. And this will help your computer not have to process things that are not near you. You can still adjust your render distance, make it lower if you're still having problems with your computer handling it. Otherwise, you can increase this so you're able to see further from the player. Also here down at entity distance, it's normally set at 100%. Anything higher will really lag your computer out. So I recommend not doing that. You can also lower it down to 50%, which will help out. They also have this new setting for Chunk Builder, which can help with some of the visual holes that occur after breaking blocks. So you can choose between threaded, semi-blocking, or full blocking, but this will impact your performance, so threaded is recommended. You can also change your graphics, setting it to fast will make it the best for your computer speed. But if a computer can handle something a little bit nicer, I set mine to fancy. You also could choose to take off the clouds to help a bit. You turn off like entity shadows. Obviously, you don't want to be running any like shaders or extreme block textures. So you are going to lose out on some of the looks of your Minecraft world, but you're still able to play it. You also can like turn down particles to minimal and you can also change your frames depending on what your computer can handle. I used to play like a 60, but now I play unlimited. It just helps get more frames, which helps with my recording. There's also smooth lighting, which you can turn off. There's biome blender, which you can turn down. This also makes it the fastest. So there's a lot of features just within the vanilla video settings that you can change to improve your gameplay. Cause I know a lot of you guys said you didn't play because you're waiting for like Optifine or Sodium to come out, which are mods that will even help beyond this. Now, whenever you are upgrading, make sure you make a backup of your world and then don't play in the backup. In case the original world doesn't work in the new version, you can always go back to your backup and play that in the older version. Now, the RAM in game is up here in the top right where it says memory. Here's a percentage. It shows how much being used compared to how much you're allowing. For me, it easily gets up into the 2000s, which is two gigabytes. So that's why I recommend going at least four. And if you see this number getting close to 100%, then you need to restart your Minecraft. So hopefully that answers some of your guys' computer issue problems. If you guys have any other tips, leave them in the comments. So let's look at some recent changes that made to Minecraft. So first we're gonna look at the release candidates of 1.18. They actually came out with four of these. But for the first release candidate, they fixed moving through blocks in spectator mode causing memory leak. It was deemed a very important, as you can imagine. So just by having the spectator mode where you phase through the blocks was causing a lag spike for a short period, but then it was getting progressively worse over time, eventually crashing the game. Now I did a lot of flying with spectator mode, checking out all the new 1.18 terrain. And I did have problems over time that I had to restart my Minecraft. But this is one of the reasons why you want to restart your Minecraft every so often, because there is still memory leaks in the game such as this one and over time that will use up your ram it will cause the screen for freeze for like partial seconds but then eventually crash your game so that's why i recommend restarting every once in a while 
For 1-18 release candidate 2, they came out with this fix in larger caves. The cave's generation cannot reach below Y level negative 54, so there was no large lava lakes occurring below there. Here you can see the area that was supposed to have a lake, but it doesn't have any lava right there. And this is what it would actually look like after the fix. So these sprawling lava lakes that we used to see at Y level 10 in 1.17 are still in the game. They just got moved down, but no longer at Y level 10. And in the new chunks, you'll see they're going to start at 10 blocks above the bottom of the world, which is now considered negative 55. In 1 to 18 release candidate 3, they fixed this bug where block were losing their loot inside of them after you died. This was affecting all different types of lootable blocks, like furnaces as well. So in 1 to 18 release candidate 4, they fixed a problem with low distribution of coal ore. So the image here on the left hand side is, is what the ore distribution looked like shortly before 1 to 18 came out. And on the right hand side is what it looks like when 1 to 18 came out after all these release candidates. The problem was that the coal itself wasn't as much as it was supposed to be. Obviously this is really thin over here and this is a lot thicker. Same for the coal that you can find in the top of the mountains. So coal will once again be one of the most common ores that you can find. So all these changes came out just before the full release of 1.18. Now let's take a look at all the changes that are going to be in 1.18.1. First being the pre-release one. So they came out with this next version to fix a few stability issues as well as some other bugs. So in the first pre-release of this, they fixed the issue with players having low bandwidth with server connections, which was causing the timeout error. They also fixed this bug to do with chunk rendering distance on servers that seems shorter than in 1.17. So you can see some examples. 1.17 is right over here on the left, and 1.18 is over here. It said they didn't change any of the settings, even without changing any of the render distance. The fog would just creep in much closer. And if you cranked up your render distance and sim distance to max, the fog would still be there. So this is definitely an issue, and that is now fixed in 1.18.1. And they address this saying that the world fog will now start out further away from the player. Make sure that distant terrain is more visible. And now the fog will no longer be placed in a spherical area around the player, but instead a cylindrical. So we can see this in game right here in front of me. I can see pretty far out, but obviously kind of in the corner of the world, it kind of curves rather than being a square. So right here, it's definitely a little bit foggier there as well as over here. But you could definitely notice this when going vertical. So if I just go underneath of the world, you can see that it's no longer like super foggy when looking in the distance vertically. This doesn't just help look downward, but also upwards at the new mountains. So you can see them a lot more clearly. They don't get cut off as badly compared to when they had the spherical fog and it would just cut off the tops of them. If you're down here, you had a really difficult time to see the tip of them very clearly. They also fixed this bug, which was plaguing us even in 1.17, where beacons were reverting their power to the previous one when the world was reloaded. So if you had set your beacon to like haste, you come back, and it would be reverted to the previous one. So hopefully that fixes the beacon problems people have been having. You guys might remember my quantum entangled piston and observer over here, where it would randomly activate, despite there are no updates occurring right here. And the updates were actually, for that particular observer, were occurring way over here, where we have these drip leaf. The drip leaf for causing updates. You can see they do the three pulses, the short delay, one, two, three. And that's exactly what we're seeing over here where they have the copper blocks, except the copper blocks aren't actually doing any changes. Now if I go ahead and just remove that block there, you can see it still activates when there is air here. And I made a bug report about that ghost observer. And it turns out the issue was related to the clone command, copying some extraneous ticks from outside of the selected area. So this observer was actually getting ticked from a clone command that was over here. So I have a clone command, which is just cloning this chest into this area here. It's not cloning anything else, it's cloning only a single block, but it was accidentally taking the ticks from over there and cloning them over there, causing that piston to activate. That is so strange. It's like they're really far away. So if we go ahead and just remove these two clone blocks and we come back over here to our piston, you can see, hey, look at that. No longer activates. And they came in and fixed this problem all together so you shouldn't see this weird, bizarre, entangled observers detecting things that are extremely far away anymore in 1.18.1. Now getting closer to the full release of 1.18.1, they came out with release candidates 1 and 2. The first one fixing this problem from 1.17 were bees that were inside of hives and nests were sometimes despawning when the world is reloaded. This is obviously pretty problematic because over time your bees and your bee farms would eventually just not be there anymore. And it seemed like the problem was that the entities were not being stored in the trunk anymore. In the same version, they also fixed how fog is interacting with 
entities compared to blocks around them. You can see that these guys definitely look a little bit odd compared to their block versions. You can really see this on the edge of the fog where the entities are almost like invisible. So if we hop in game after this fix, we can now see it looks pretty good. We got some mobs right there. Look like they're blending in with the fog quite well. Uh, the portal there kind of sticks out compared to the other stuff. But for the most part, it looks like it's really good. There is also this problem when updating 1.17 servers or 1.18 getting these errors. And that has been resolved. In the second release candidate of 1.18.1, they fixed the problem to do with some chunks not loading. Had to do if you just kept flying into new generation, you end up loading chunks really quickly. And this would cause these chunks to never load unless you left the and then restarted it. Now I have seen other people complain about having problems with the chunks not loading properly in 1.18. So hopefully this resolves it. It was considered very important and is now fixed in 1.18.1. They also came out with 1.18 Release Candidate 3 to address a very major issue that affects versions all the way back to 1.7. And they want if you have any games running to close down your Minecraft as well as restart the launcher. Now this is probably one of the most major security issues in the entire history of Minecraft. It has to do with Apache Log4j. Now this is a Java based logging tool. This tool is used to rewrite the log4j framework which introduces a lot of rich features. And the problem is that this log framework is widely used in business systems development to record log information and is also used in Minecraft. The problem is that there has been found a way to use this tool to do remote code execution. This is done by using the error messages that are output by the log. The attackers can then use these features to construct a special data request packet using this vulnerability and ultimately trigger remote code execution. Meaning you don't have to give these incoming packets any special requests and they're still able to access and run code remotely on your machine. Now it says that there is quite a few different affected versions of this. It sounds like they did update and fix this problem, but they need people to update their version so that they're using the most recent one. Now Bisec hosting was fast to react and they already implemented a fix that went throughout all their servers. And the fix is just by putting this text here after the Java in your Minecraft. Minecraft came out with their own announcements. If you're on a Minecraft server, you want to do these things. Where they suggest if you're playing 1.18, upgrade to 1.18.1 if possible. For 1.17, they recommend putting this in your JVM arguments. For versions 1.12 to 1.16, they want you to download a file and put it into where your server is. And 1.7 to 1.11, they have a different file. They said versions below 1.7 are not affected. Also keep in mind that modified clients or third-party launchers won't have this update that they automatically fix it when you restart your launch. So in conclusion, if you're using the newest launcher, you shouldn't have to worry about this after a restart and if you're playing single player. If you're hosting a server, make sure to check out this website, which I'll link down below. And I'll let you guys know if there's anything else that comes up. I love testing out the newest things that come to Minecraft. And I actually have a server that's open to the viewers where you guys can join me as we test out new things. I do this live on my Twitch stream and you can find me there every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're always finding weird stuff and it's all thanks to Bisect Hosting for hosting our crazy Minecraft servers. You can support me by getting your next server from them. You'll even get 25% off if you use the code Ray or the link in my description. Now keep in mind, because of the new parity changes for the terrain, both Java and Bedrock are going to look very similar if you use the same seed as well as location. So this area here where I have the tallest mountain peaks of two different mountain types, you should be able to also find this in the Java edition. So this is the seed as well as the coordinates. Now there's also some 1.19 news. So in the Bedrock edition, you can come in and activate a new experimental toggle called the Wildly Update, and that's where the new Skulk features are going to be accessed from. But they do say that more features are coming in the future, and this is only the beginning. So if you do have Bedrock Edition, you can get the beta Minecraft version of it. And then if you go play beta, create new world, create new world, then I normally set this to creative, but then just down here is where they're going to have the activating the new experimental stuff. Now when you create your world, you just go into your creative menu, search up here for the skulk items, and you can see they're all right here. Now I did cover all the cool things you could do with these new blocks once they're going to be added into vanilla with this video here, which I'll have a link in the description. I'm actually really excited for 1.19. I will be making more cool 1.19 devices. So make sure you're subscribed with the bell turned on. We also got some more sneak peeks of 1.19. This tweet by Agnes saying that we now have tadpoles in a bucket in the wild, the update. And they have an image here. Got the little tadpoles in the water. And she has one sitting in the bucket. Look at that. Just so small, the little eyes peeking out. Hopefully you don't accidentally mistake this as a normal bucket of water <laughs> because of the tadpole. I mean, look at it. It's like six pixels in there. I'm guessing this egg here is also the spawn egg for the tadpoles. It's kind of a brownish orange. Now I did cover everything that is going to be new in 1.19, which does include the new frogs and the tadpoles. One of the questions was, 
can people transport these tadpoles? Because depending on where the tadpole grows up, it'll change colors based off of the temperature and the humidity of that biome. So now it makes sense that you can scoop these guys up, transport them to a new area, put them into your new pond, and when they grow up, you can get the new color types of frogs. Because the tadpoles and frogs are only going to be naturally found in the new swamps that they're updating. You can check out my video covering all of 1.19 after this video. I'll be down in the description. We also got some more sneak peeks about the Morden and the other Skulk blocks. King B Dogs tweeted out this image where the Skulk Shrieker is putting off its animation right as it gets activated. In this image, we can see the Skulk Shrieker as well as the Warden. And it looks like the Warden's doing some kind of animation. This might be him attacking something or it might be him kind of getting summoned into the world, which is one of the properties that the Shrieker does. And we've seen this in action during the Minecraft live event. The player also has the dark effect. In the background, we can also see the skulk sensor. In the third image, we can see the warden doing some weird thing with its arms. It got its arms all the way backwards, like it's just about to do some kind of move. You can also see that there's a dirt block here instead of a grass block, so maybe he kind of like summoned from there. And in each of these pictures, it is raining, so I don't know if they're testing to see if rain will have some kind of special effects on this guy. I'm really hoping that the warden has some other features, like I hope he can break blocks kind of in his area where he spawns in. That way he can get to the players, even if they run behind like a pillar. What features do you think the Shrieker or the Warden should have? Let me know in the comments. Leave a like and check out this playlist where you can learn about cool tricks you can do in the new caves. Or this playlist where you can learn how to make a farm for every item in the game of Minecraft. We're really close to reaching 5,000 followers on Twitter. So if you guys have a Twitter account, check me out there as I do post some in real life photos. And thanks to all you guys who already followed. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!